And hello again everyone and welcome back to the Sacred Rings. As usual, this is Dennis, and staff on the Paleo Gamer, and I am your host. Now if you last remember when we last saw Umang, he had gone through the portal from the four worlds and had arrived at the Keeper's homeworld, the homeworld that is now under the control of the Shadow Legion. And using the information he was given by Michael, he is going to have to sneak into the palace. Now it's not really clear exactly what he's planning to do when he gets there, but somehow getting into the Shadow Legion's palace is going to let him prevent the Shadow Legion from getting the Sacred Rings and the Tetrahedrons. And oh yeah, he has to help Mila somehow. He's been trapped as a spirit there so she can join Razan in the afterlife. So let's get started on this and see where we're going to go. And I have to ask, was the Keeper's World always like this or did it just get this nasty looking after the Shadow Legion took over? Because, you know, this is not a real impressive looking home. But, okay, let's get started. Now, I can go down this way for a while, but there's a guard down there and we're going to get stopped. So instead, I'm going to cut to the left here and get up on the higher ground. See, there's some vines here. It looks like you're going into a cave, but you're not. You're actually climbing these vines up to this upper level. And we're going to make our way up here. Um, we can't continue that way. We can go one more, but we'll be stopped by that rock fall. So we're going to cross over here. And keep going up. This is all these weird statues along the side here, for whatever reason. Okay, we can't go any further this way. I came up here. You see, there's the guard we couldn't have gone past earlier. We can't do anything for him right now. He's next to a hell mouth or something. And he is standing, hmm, right under one of those statues. I wonder if Umang is thinking what I'm thinking. So let's cross over. Now we're directly above him. Now if you notice, this statue has two highlight points on it. See, there's a highlight point here and a highlight point at the bottom. Now hopefully... Umang knows basic physics and leverage and knows to push it at the bottom because if he tries to push it up here the guard will just hear him and come up and game over. So we're going to lever this at the bottom with our crowbar. Well, that was convenient. Alright. Now I'm going to go back this way. There's the path we came across, but I need to go do something else first. I need to go down here. Remember that rock slide earlier where I said we could continue down the path? This is the other side of that. The reason I'm coming down here is so we can look through this little crevice in the rock. And we need to use our telescope to do that. There is the cave that Michael told me about. I should be able to enter the palace undetected. Yes, we have to come here. If we didn't come here and look for the cave first, we wouldn't even be able to take the path towards it. We have to search it out in advance. So now I can go back and go down and take the path I couldn't earlier. And there's a lot of walking around in this part of the game. Okay, there's the finds I climbed up, so I can get back down. I'm gonna walk over to the middle, but there's no reason to. Alright. There's that pit that the unfortunate guard was under, or beside, he's now under these rocks. I'll pick up his sword, because you never know when that sort of thing may come in handy. 
And now we'll head on this way. All right, that's the palace we're trying to get to. Now, we can't go up there. If we do, we'll be caught immediately, so we have to sneak in the back way. We're going to go over this way past Mr. Bones here. Hi, Mr. Bones. Okay. Let's go straight this way until you hit these trees and can continue. Now, this is kind of a maze. It's a little hard to find your way around up here. So I'm going to try to be real careful and show you how to get through this. It's easy to get into dead ends and get lost up here. Turn to the right until you get a move forward arrow. Now turn to the left and kind of upwards. See? Turn to the right, kind of upwards. And now we go to the left. Now I'm going to turn around. Now this is a little confusing, because there are two paths here, and the obvious one isn't the one you want to take. See, there's a path there, to the left, leading towards that archway. And another path, you see it's no longer a move arrow, and there it's back. See, there's two different paths here. You want to take the one on the right, even though it doesn't look like it's where you want to go. Now if we turn to the left here, there's a path leading upward. Now I'm straight at a rock face. If I spin slightly to the right, see I've got a highlight point there. And Umang will complain if I try to go this way. It's too high. All right. Take the sword and stick it in the rock. Now we can climb up. Now the first thing you need to do here is turn around and pick up the sword you just... Put that back in inventory because we're going to need that again. Alright. I go forward twice. Then I take the path up to the left. Now I'm going to turn to the right again. Now you see, here, this path is blocked by a bunch of vines. Fortunately, I picked the sword back up. Now, I can go through the vines. Now, you may hear some water running. You hear it? We're going to the source of that water. I've gone forward. Turn to the right. Turn to the right again. See, there's a waterfall. You may have actually remembered seeing that when we were at the um, crevice with the spyglass. We need this, because remember the water lamp that we were using when it was dark earlier? We have to refill the water lamp. This is a thing we got from Nikapur's moving house. Okay, the water lamp is now recharged. So now we have to go back. So I'll go back to the right. Go to the left and just make my way back down the way I just came. Which is down there. See, there's, again, there's two paths here. That leads back to the waterfall. I need to go down here. Now I just keep going straight at this point through the archway on the other side. And now I just sort of need to follow this path up and around. I kind of keep curving to the left. I found the cave. Yeah, I just ducked past a bunch of bats. You go into the cave till we hit the point where it's too dark to continue. So we have to use our lamp here. Now that's the only time we need to use the lamp. Let's continue on into this thing. We're now inside the palace, but we're up on this upper level. That's why we couldn't go directly into the palace. We had to dodge those guys. So somehow we're going to jump over to that ledge. And, oh, look, there's an opening. Let's go check inside of it and see what's going on in here. to a little spy.
My warriors are growing restless. They need action. Is there any news from Dura? He says that it becomes difficult to maintain his power. Is there any other way to get into the Keeper's world? Without the Tetrahedrons, I do not know how it can be done. Damn it! Are running out of time. Clumsy, you man. What really is clumsy. the status of your experiment in the Keeper's laboratory? I need more time. Work quickly, Guggen. Time is a luxury we do not have. All right. Well, we kind of fell down a hole and wound up in not the best place we could have hoped to get into. Yeah, this is a... Yeah, we're here in the dungeon. All right. We need to kind of go to the back. Where there's this sarcophagus or whatever here. And for some reason you can't go forward. You have to go down to get to the sarcophagus. That threw me for a bit. Now this shows us this little panel. Now that may look kind of familiar. Remember we picked that up in Ferd's, you know, the former executioner. We picked that up in his mine back in the Four Worlds. And we had a little picture of it. And this thing always goes to the first page again. There. See his markings in the first, third, and fourth position? We need to make that match. First, third, and fourth. What are you afraid of? Never seen the soul of a dead man before? No, this would be the first time. Well, get a good look. You are in the presence of the soul of the great Trey. Trey? Are you the Trey who betrayed... Silence! I don't need strangers reminding me of what I did. Who are you, anyway? I am Umang from the Keeper's Clan. The Keeper's Clan? You're braver than you look. I doubt you'll survive long in this place. I'll take my chances. Like I said, braver than you look. What exactly is it that brings you here, Umay? I am here to free the soul of Mila at her beloved Razan's request. Poor Mila. If only she could forgive me for what I did. My soul could find peace at last. You are trapped here among the living until you receive Mila's pardon? Yes. Help me, Umay. Help me to gain Mila's forgiveness. If you swear to help me, I will help you in any way that I can. Fine. Tell me where she is. They took her to the vault. After that, no one ever saw her alive again. I'm afraid that's all I know. It's not much to go on. Trey, wait! Well, I guess that's to be expected from a ghost. Yeah. You kind of think that a person named Trey might betray someone. Yeah, I get the pun. Okay. We can still go down to the little bottom of the sarcophagus thing. There's a piece of paper here. If I click on it, it goes directly into our book without us seeing it. You see the book went back to the first page again. I have to read, get back to it. There. Now we have the full diagram. Now it's one, three, four, four, two, five, one. Okay? Now we just need to remember that. Now there's some stuff we can look at and wander around and explore here in this torture chamber, but I don't guess we need to really deal with that yet. Instead, let's go back to the door. Now the door has the obvious lock that we just got the clue for. So it's one, three, four, four, two, Five and the one is in its right position already. Okay, so we're out. Now, why would the torture chamber have a lock on the inside? Does that even make sense? 
I mean, you want to keep people from getting out, not getting in. Okay. There's two levers here. The third one's broken off. We don't need it. But these will unlock other doors. Alright. The first door that just got opened is this one here. I'm going to go inside. There's a guy chained to the wall, or what's left of a guy, and this... These chains might come in handy. Yeah. Why those chains, as opposed to everything else lying in this room, well, I guess the phones will come in handy, but... Yeah, we have to have something to do. Now, we really can't... I'm going to jump ahead and do something that you don't know why you need to do it yet. We're going to go into the torture chamber again, and there's a guillotine in the torture chamber. Why the torture chamber has a guillotine is anyone's guess. We can put the chains here. And activate it. What we're doing is the chains have manacles on the end of them. And we're cutting the manacles off. So we will just have the chain itself. Because all we're going to need is that chain. See, it's now just a chain. It's no longer shackles. That's all we have to do in here for right now. None of these other doors I'm passing have anything of real interest in them. Down here, there's a note lying on the floor. Which doesn't go in our book, it just lets us read it. It basically says... Whoever wrote it said they're going to get rid of them like everyone else. They will throw him into the labyrinth to be lost, hungry, and alone. He heard a woman crying. It turned out to be Mila. She claims that she knows a way out of the labyrinth. So there is an exit. But then they take her away, but not to the labyrinth. Well, I guess her knowledge of how to get out won't help her. And this poor person says that he's going to be alone and get thrown away thrown into the labyrinth like everyone else. But all we need to know from that is that Mila knows a way out of the labyrinth. I wish you could tell us how to do it. Now we're going to go down here, just this, down these steps, and go into this room. Now you notice there's a shaft in the middle of the room, and over here on the right, there is a mechanism. Now if I I can turn the left and right wheels in this mechanism. You can see there's a red line there. But the two middle ones don't turn. Now what I have to do is get this red line to be straight across on all of them. But I need to be able to turn these middle two in order to do that. The way I do that is with that chain that I collected earlier. When I put the chain here, see it connects these two. Now I can turn this one. Okay, that's as far as it goes. It won't move any further. So, click here to take the chain back. Now I'm going to... Well, these two are already lined up, so you have to get those two. I have to get the post to line up where I can put the chain on them. Probably should have said that's what I was doing the first time. So now they're connected. And I can move this one. Now you notice that that's also causing that to move. So, that's as far as he goes. See, he won't move anymore. Now, I can take that, ch take the chain away again. I can move this one. Until they line up again. Reapply the chain here. Rotate those. See, now those three are connected and done. And remember, the ones in the end will move by themselves. Now I just have to move him until he gets to the red line again. And we're done. This elevator will come up and Wu Meng will automatically go down on it. Okay. There are no living people here. You'll have to find something to show you the way. What? Well, I don't really know. Thanks for nothing.
yeah, that was less than useful. The main clue here is he said you need to find some thing to show you the way, not some one. Mila, we're in the labyrinth, by the way. If you go through these doors without following the correct path, bars will drop down on either side of you and you'll be trapped. So we have to figure out which path to take through these doors. And trial and error doesn't seem to cut it. I tried just to see if I can make it happen. Um, what you have to do is you have to use Mila's amulet. Remember, Ferd gave us that. When you are in front of the right path, the amulet will glow like that because Mila knows how to get through the labyrinth. So we just have to keep following Mila's amulet. See, that looks like it should have taken us back where we just came from. It doesn't. We just have to keep following Mila's amulet until we get out. There we go. And if you hear that click when I'm walking, if I was on the wrong path or hadn't used the amulet, that's where I would have gotten trapped. That click. Okay, we are now out. So that's good. We're done. So we just have to walk down this little corridor to the end. Now there's a door here. We don't want to go through it yet. We want to do this door to the right. Omeg, it's Mila. I can feel her. She is somewhere nearby. Now, if you remember, Mila was walled up alive with her cask of Amandalada. So, we just have to find a wall. Now, if I go over here, notice this wall is active. So I can just take the crowbar. And there's what's left of Mila. Yeah. Use her amulet, and she will talk to you. Mila? Who are you? My name is Umang. Umang. That name is not familiar to me. I'm here to help you. I was sent by Rizan. Rizan? Yes. I promised him that I would release your soul. That is a promise you might find difficult to keep, Umang. Do you know how to remove the curse that Gugan has placed upon my soul? No, not yet. Gugan's curse uses a magical orb to keep my soul trapped here. Where can I find this orb? He keeps it behind the door with the spider's sign. But how can that help you? There are guards everywhere. I'm thinking. Mila! Well, I guess I'd better get used to that. Yeah, these spirits of the dead don't seem to be really good at helping their own selves. I mean, Jesus. Okay, let's see if we can find the cask of Amontillado in here, because I know it's got to be good. Okay, I'll settle for this rock. Let's go back out. And through that other door that I ignored in the Okay, this door is at the bottom of a flight of stairs. But this flight of stairs ends at this gate. Now there's a door over here that has a lock on it. I just have to open the lock. This actually takes us back to the hallway with the um, torture room and all that on it. That's just so we can get back and not have to go through the labyrinth again in case we ever have to come back this way. Now, the gate is blocked. It's opened with this wheel. But if you notice, the gate opens and immediately falls shut. So I need to find something to wedge the thing open with, like, say, a rock. Okay, there we go. Now we can go upstairs. We go up to this first landing and open this door. This lets us get to the next tower. And this place is kind of a ruin, isn't it? 
haven't been looking around much because I'm trying to do a lot in this one session, but yeah, it looks like it was an impressive room once. There's the remains of a stairway there, but we can't do anything with it. This is the... Where's my path? There it is. This is the spider door that she mentioned here. Let's see, there's the spider. Unfortunately, I can't do anything with it. The door's locked. It's locked. Of course it is. So I'm just going to go back and out the other side for right now. Into this room. Now, this room has... That's another elevator there in the front. It's controlled by that lever, but the lever doesn't do anything because the elevator's already here. Instead, we're going to go back to this room. Or back to this corner. I can go up those stairs, but there's another locked door up there that I can't do anything with. Instead, I'm going to go down these stairs on this side. And... okay. If you go this way, there's a wandering guard in that hallway. You'll get captured again. So, let's not do that. We need a way to get the guard to come in here so we can get rid of it. The way we're going to do that is with this lever. That will call the elevator to this floor. The guard will hear that and come to investigate. You see, we just came down the elevator. Where, no, we can't let him find us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back upstairs. And automatically go upstairs to get to this position. The guard comes in and goes into the elevator to try to figure out what's going on. Now I notice the elevator is held up by that rope. Let's take the sword and cut the rope. I'm sorry. No, you're not, Ome. You just said that. And really, that looked to be maybe a 20-foot drop, which means it would have hurt the guard. But he probably could have survived that, actually. All right, now we can go downstairs and not have to worry about the guards. Okay. And given that I haven't seen a single person, I have to wonder, why was it so important that I got the Keepers the um, Mark of the Shadow Legion last time around? Because they said I had to have it to get in here, but I haven't even gotten close to someone. No one's even seen me from a distance, so whatever. Okay, listen, you can hear someone talking. There's two doors here. One of them is locked, but the other one leads to a guard room where you will probably get captured, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go one more up and go through this door on the right. This is a weapons locker. Now, weirdly, the only weapon I can pick up is this... This could be useful. ...spear. I don't know why Umang thinks that's so useful, but it's the only one I can pick up. Um, there's a door window I can even look out of it. There's all these chests, and there's another sword, but I can't pick it up. See, I don't even have my original sword anymore. So it's like, why am I even in here? Why does just this one spear? I guess we may have a spear fetish. I don't know. All right. We've actually done what we need to do in this side of the building right now. So we need to go back upstairs and climb further up that tower we were in before. See, we're actually in the... If, when we were facing the front of the um, building, we're actually in the um, rightmost tower right now. So... Oops, I'm trying to go the wrong door again. It's this door. This would be the central tower. And 
hear back down here. And the whole time I was here, I was expecting these things to come to life and attack me. They just seem to like the statues that look like that. And again, is this the Shadow Legion's... Um, the Shadow Legion's design, or is this the way it actually looked? Okay. We're going to go up further. This level has a door in it. I have to get rid of him somehow. Yes, we know you do. There's a guard up there that we can do. Just, he's there. We're going to go all the way up to the top. Now we're on the top, where there is that thing, which is a ballista. You go up here, see there's a building over there, there's a rope hanging from overhead, and there's a ladder over here. Let's move up the ladder. And now we're on the very top. Remember that rope? This is what it's hanging from. There's also a window over there. We'll use our telescope on that window. The Mage's Room. Yes, it is. All right. What we need to do first is we need to lower this rope. Now, I'll save you a lot of trial and error. Click this twice. Again, it's not clear why you have to do that, but whoops. You just have to do it. Now that we know where the mage's room is, we need to aim the ballista at it. So it's to the left and down. So we need to spin I need the this. Exact location. Okay, well, we know that. It's to the left and down. So of course it turns to the right. spin this to make it point to the left. Actually, that lowers it, it's not pointing down. Alright. No, we're not going to kill the mage with this. What we're going to do is we're trying to figure out how to get over there. Remember that rope I lowered that I said had to be lowered twice? This is it. And I want to know where that ring came from because that ring wasn't there before I lowered it. But, whatever. I click on it, I take the ring. Now I can't go very far with it. All I want to do is attach that ring to the ballista. Now I can't go back that way because there's a rope in the way. I'm going to go over here and we're going to fire the ballista. And you expect me to believe that no one I'm in the Shadow Legion's base, and no one noticed that happening. Whatever. Okay, I now have a zip line, effectively, going over there. Although, with that sag in the middle, it's not going to be much of a zip line. But, I use the spear that I somehow need to pick up, and we will slide over. What does he think? This is an Assassin's Creed game or something? Come on. Alright, let's go look in the window. Gogan, Lord Baga wants to see you. Of course he does. Yes, yes, I'm my way. Alright. Now we can sneak inside. Now what we have here, there is a, a spell book. There's a big spell book here, and six books over here. So there's a total of seven books. Now we're gonna flip through this until Umain finds one he likes. Here it is, the stone ritual. Any spell will turn the user into stone. Okay, why Umain decided he needs that, but whatever. Remember how there's one book at the top, then three books on one side, and three books on the other side? That's what this pattern represents. It represents the books. So if we number them 
counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have to go from one to two to six to four to three to five to seven, okay? The way we link these books is using this image. See this image here? It's a triangle with spikes. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do is go to book two, which is the topmost one on the right. So that's here. There's book one. Here's book two. And we want it to show the triangle with spikes, which conveniently it already does. The next thing is this cross with crescents on it. That needs to go to the middle book on the left. So I need to change it so that the left side is the cross with crescents, like that. Now that one shows a triangle with a crescent underneath it. Now that links back to the book four, which is the bottom one on this side, here. So I need to flip it so that that's got a triangle with a crescent underneath it. That next shows these three circles. It's got crop circle of some kind. Okay. Book four simply links up to book three, which is right here. Okay. He leads to this gyroscope looking thing, which goes over here. There's the gyroscope looking thing. And he leads to a triangle with a crescent at the top. It goes to the last book, which is here. Success. Yes. Triangle with a crescent at the top, and it goes back to the one at the end. So, nothing will happen until I move up here. Yes, just go hide again. Who makes sense a lot of this game hiding? Interesting. Yeah, does he... Okay. You're a wizard. Do you just automatically come into your chambers and start casting spells? Who knows? All right. Yeah, notice we can't do anything to Durat. I kind of wanted to just push him over and break him, but uh, the game won't let me. Instead, what I do is I go over here and get this key ring. Now I can leave this door. Now remember the tower we were in earlier where I chopped the elevator rope and dropped the um, guard. This was the other stairway from it, the one that went up. I couldn't have gone into that room before, which is why I didn't bother to go up here. But that's where we are. That's also why I had to come over here and get rid of all the guards and everything, because I was coming back this way. Always trying to go up the wrong door here. Let's go this way. Okay. Now that I have Dugan's keys, I can get through this locked door here. I just have to use the keys on it. And now I'm in Guggen's chambers. There's a bed over here, I don't need to worry about it. There's a bunch of books and bookshelves over here. And there's a mirror. So I'm going to go over here. and slide the mirror over here. Now, if you look at this mirror, it's obviously showing a reflection of the desk and everything. But, and this puzzle annoys me to no end. See the two windows here that are kinda just a blank stone wall between them? If you look in the mirror, there's an object visible between those two windows. It's visible here, it's not visible here. So that's obviously important. But, before I can do anything with it, I have to click on that. Now listen. You see that little tone indicates that something happened. Now, what annoys me about this is, notice that my cursor is not highlighted. 
every place else in the game, if I can interact with something, it gives me a highlight to indicate that that is a point I'm supposed to be able to click on. This doesn't have it. You basically have to be randomly clicking on objects in order to get them to, to realize that this happens, even if it's something you don't think you should click on. I actually consider that a cheat. You're making the game more difficult than it needs to be by breaking your own interface rules. Sorry. I dis really dislike that piece. I, I'm convinced that has to be a bug, because otherwise, how would you discover it unless, like me, you spend just randomly started clicking everything on the mirror, which is what I did until I heard the term. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this thing right here. We'll need that later. Hmm, a library card. Why does the wizard need a library card? Okay, now I have a highlight here. If I had not clicked on the thing in the mirror, that highlight would not exist. That gives me a bunch of orbs. Let's go back to the mirror and move it to the other end of the room. Now then, if I look at this mirror, notice that there's one globe. It's the bottom left in the mirror, which means it's on the bottom right in reality, which is glowing. If I click on it, it makes the tone. Again, no highlight. Only this mirror behaves that way. I don't know why. Strange. Yes, it's strange. We know we want the bottom right one. And there's that tone again. Okay. We're pretty much done at this point for what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to head all the way back. At this point we have to go down and talk to Mila again. Because we have her soul for it. Remember she's on the bottom of this. Here it is, Mila. Gugan's curse. You must dispel it on the wind, Umang. When you do, I will be free. It's kinda... Okay, that's kinda less than useful information, Mila, but okay. Sorry, I had muted my mic for a second there and forgot to turn it back on. Alright, the only place we know that has wind is all the way on the top of this tower. So let's go all the way back up to where that ballista was. Okay, again, this game really needs a fast travel system. Because half the time is spent going from point A to point B. Alright, here we are. Thank you, Umang. My soul is now free, and I can at last join my beloved Rizan. I'm happy that I could help. You must find the place where the tetrahedrons were created. Then, if you are clever, you can use the tetrahedrons to trick the Shadow Legion. Thank you, Mila. But what about Trey? I will forgive him if he helps you to reach your goal. Goodbye, Umang, and thank you. Until we meet again in the next life, Mila. Do not be in a rush to cross over, Umang. Life is beautiful no matter how hard it is. Trust me. And so we have a happy ending for Mila and Design, finally. Even though apparently the afterlife isn't all it's cracked up to be. Alright. This has actually 
gone on for quite a long time, but there was no good break point in there is why I just went through the whole thing. Uh, we're going to stop here, and when we come back, we will conclude with the Sacred Rings. Yes, we only have the last little bit to go. We're almost to the end. Isn't that exciting? So, this is Dennis, Tanstaffle the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time for the conclusion of the Sacred Rings. I will see you later. <laughs>